Following a fascinating first encounter, they discover that their original fiery desire has mysteriously cooled to frigid misunderstanding. However, fate intervenes, reunited at a lovely Australian wedding, they choose to pretend to be a couple. However, passions rekindle amid the sun-kissed environment, leading them to confront their true feelings and accept a second shot at love. The narration begins with a young woman named B, rashly entering a coffee shop and asking the barista if she can use the restroom. She is told that it is exclusively for customers. To prove that she was a customer, she tried to buy something, but failed due to the number of customers and the long line waiting to pay at the counter. Despite her pleading, the attendant still ignored her, even when she mentioned state law. Meanwhile, a nearby client, Ben, notices this and pretends that B is his wife, and that he is purchasing something for her to assist her. B is captivated by him, and they discuss the bathroom law, although it was just a short chapter. At that time, she hurried to the bathroom, responding to nature's call, where she talked to a friend on her cell phone about the guy she met, which Ben overheard. Due to her clumsiness, she accidentally wets her pants due to the sink, and spends time attempting to dry herself. In her noise inside, Ben checked on her, and explained that she took a long time to pee because she had a lot to release since she had been holding it for six hours, before exiting. Before she departs, Ben calls out to her because she has a toilet seat cover stuck to her shoe, but she believes he's going to ask her out, so she saves face. Ben and B spend the day together, hitting it off, before returning to his flat to enjoy grilled cheese. B got burned by the hot sandwich. They had a nice conversation, spending quality time with each other. They sleep together, non-sexually. After that, B tries to sneak out silently in the morning, but Ben notices her and becomes disheartened. Moments later, Ben's friend Pete arrives and notices a wrench, indicating that Ben has informed B about his late mother, which he never does during a typical hookup. Meanwhile, B calls a friend and says she thinks she could like Ben, but when she returns, she overhears Ben telling Pete that she was a disaster, she is nothing, and that he couldn't get rid of her fast enough, which hurts B. Six months later, Ben and Pete meet Pete's sister Claudia and her girlfriend Hallie. After their brief chit-chat, Hallie presents her younger sister, who turns out to be B. They admit that they have met, reminiscing about their first encounter when B sneaked out and talking about Ben mentioning the disaster girl. Things rapidly became awkward as both friend groups learned about their unpleasant meeting. Ben and B soon start bickering and hating each other, and they toast to never seeing each other again. Around a year later, Claudia and Hallie got engaged, but Hallie's father objects, and soon announced that they are planning a wedding and celebrate in Sydney, Australia. This means Ben and B have to meet again. On the plane, Ben and B unintentionally boarded the same flight, and he approached her seat just to tease her. In the middle of the flight, B suddenly woke up and headed to the lavatory, but a man beat her to it. She noticed Ben's cookie and took a liking to it, but her sweater got caught. While she was trying to free it, she was noticed by a female passenger. Finally, she also got what she wanted. After arriving, Pete welcomed them and offered to pick them up. They traveled together to Pete's dad's house here in Sydney, Australia. The group arrives at the resort. Ben and B accompany Claudia and Hallie to the beach. The two are excited and can't wait, so the siblings immediately head to the sea. There, Ben sees his ex, Pete and Claudia's cousin Margaret. The siblings notice this, and Hallie narrates to her sister the past of the two, mentioning that Margaret crushed his heart. However, B insists that he does not have a heart. After B withdrew from law school, her parents, Leo and Innie, arrived. They had anticipated her to marry first and then continue her law school practice, ignorant that she had dropped out. Leo and Innie asked about her relationship status with her childhood friend, Jonathan, and were invited to the wedding as a way to reconcile after their breakup because they consider B's ex-boyfriend as family. That night, the dog and the cat, who never seemed to get along, crossed paths again. The group came together for a dinner party and met Pete and Claudia's mother, Carol, and stepfather, Roger. Everything went great at first. They lit fireworks display, ate delicious food, and played a fun and interesting game where Ben used props, leading B to scold him for cheating. However, Ben and B argued, resulting in them mistakenly lighting a firework that hit a flower display, causing a fire that landed on Hallie's hair. Nevertheless, Margaret was able to extinguish the fire using her clothes. Fearing that their childish conduct may ruin the wedding, Pete, Roger, Hallie, and Claudia discussed a plan to encourage Ben and B to get together so that they could resolve their issues and the wedding could go on as planned. The next day, while Ben was showering, he overheard Pete and Roger pretending to talk about B having feelings for him. Ben took the bait and listened in. On the other hand, 
Hallie and Claudia do the same. They intentionally have B overhear their fake conversation about Ben's affection for her. And she listens to them thoroughly. A while later, Ben knocks on the door and approaches her. The two soon notice the scheming about the team effort to get them together. To confirm this, they see Hallie and Claudia facing towards the floor. Therefore, they conclude they need to stop acting like jerks so they don't ruin the biggest event of their lives. Suddenly, Carol asks for Roger's sunglasses from the sailboat and swims out to a boat they were ordered to pull in. But Ben can't really swim further, so he is pulled by B towards the boat, where they discuss their own plan. B, hoping to get her parents off her back about Jonathan, recommends that she and Ben pretend they are falling in love with each other, which will keep Jonathan away while also getting Margaret to notice Ben again. She begins to entice him and recalls the night at his place to convince him. So, he agrees to proceed with the strategy. Ben and B begin to pretend like they are into each other and noticed by the people around them. But their pretense distracted by Jonathan's sudden arrival. Seems awkward, but B manages to introduce Ben to his former boyfriend. Leo and Innie encourages B to spend time together with Jonathan, but their daughter insists that she's with Ben. B invites with their errands but declines. The two continued their mission as they accompanied their buddies on a trek. They pretended to be sweet and tried to fondle each other, but no one noticed since they spotted a koala. They then found a spider in Ben's shorts, which caused them to panic and forced Ben to remove all of his clothes in case there were more spiders on him. He also checked on it. The sad thing is, he didn't have anything to wear anymore because he had already thrown them away. B ended up lending Ben her shorts. Later, Ben interacts with Leo and Innie, teaching Leo to swim the way his mother taught him, and they enjoy each other's company, while B secretly watches them. When Leo asks about their relationship, they explain that they are in the early stages and they love each other strongly, and they are very happy. Meanwhile, Claudia, Hallie, and Pete keep a close eye on their moves. B thanks Ben for being truthful with her father. While Ben and B begin to get along better, B hangs out with Jonathan at the resort. He explains that he had nothing to do with being there, it's all about B's parents. B says, that's sweet. You're part of the family. Jonathan admits that he always thinks about her, and B reciprocates the feeling. Meanwhile, Ben spends time with Claudia, discussing how she dumped him. Later, they prepared for another activity, and Ben was captivated by B's stunning look. Margaret then intervened before they traveled. Upon arrival at the location, Ben helped B out of the vehicle, and everyone saw their sweetness, which disappointed Margaret. That night, the group goes for a nighttime boat cruise. While others are having a good time, Ben approaches B and asks her for a dance. They perform an intimate dance, and as things heat up, Pete invites everyone for a champagne toast. Meanwhile, Ben and B attempt to refocus everyone's attention by performing the I'm Flying sequence from Titanic on the ship's bow. They grab people's attention, particularly Margaret and Jonathan. When the show is over, B falls into the water, and Ben goes in after her, even though he is not a good swimmer. They make it to a dinghy before the group spots them and calls for help. While they wait, Ben and B have a conversation in which Ben apologizes for what she overheard him say about her, explaining that he was hurt when she left, and B wants them to go see that landmark from dry land. Ben promises a date at the opera house, before the rescue arrives. As they are airlifted, Ben begins to exhibit signs of nervousness, and B begins to sing unwritten by Natasha Bedingfield to him, as she overheard him listening to it on the plane ride over, and he refers to it as his serenity song to calm him down while flying. Ben and B are returned to their hotel, where Ben serves B a grilled cheese sandwich, much like when they first met. B suddenly eats the hot sandwich again, which he blows on to cool it down. They then begin to kiss, leading to them having fun and entertaining each other, eventually sleeping together. However, Ben leaves in the morning before B realizes he is gone, leaving her as devastated as he is. The day before the wedding, B's parents learn she dropped out of law school, and Ben is to blame for telling Jonathan about it. Ben and B confess to faking their relationship because they knew the others were plotting against them. A disturbance occurs when the family dog knocks over the wedding cake, and Claudia rushes out. On the wedding day, Ben overhears Claudia and Hallie arguing, giving the impression that they may cancel the wedding after all that has happened. He goes to B's room and proposes that they continue their excellent behavior for Claudia and Hallie's sake. Ben and B apologize to them, followed by a heartwarming wedding ceremony, and they marry successfully. At the reception, B apologizes to her parents for quitting law school, and Leo and Innie support their daughter. Everyone happily celebrates with the newly married couple, Hallie and Claudia. After that, Margaret dances with Ben after claiming Bo has left. 
When B watches Margaret kissing Ben, she leaves the party upset. The newlyweds notice her departure. B rides in a cab, tears pouring down her face. Ben realizes he no longer feels the same way about Margaret and learns via Claudia and Hallie that B has gone somewhere. He orders them to call Harbor Rescue, before jumping into the water. Ben then arranges for a helicopter ride because he knows where she went. Ben discovers B outside the Sydney Opera House after she mentioned wanting to go there when they were stranded in the water. Ben tells B what occurred with Margaret and reveals his actual feelings, to which she reciprocates, and they kiss. The two returns to the reception and continue their kissing, with a matching fireworks display. The DJ begins to play unwritten, and everyone sings along, which torments Ben as he wonders how they know his serenity song. Everyone enjoys singing the song. Later, B and Ben apologize for almost cancelling the wedding due to their childish behavior, but Claudia and Hallie acknowledge that they staged a fight to urge Ben and B to reconcile. Additionally, Margaret and Jonathan end up together. And the song continues playing. For more videos similar to this, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications. Thank you for watching.